And now we come to the type tool for our Adobe Illustrator demonstrations. The type tool is located here in your toolbar. We're going to talk about the type tool and some of the control panel options available in conjunction with the type tool. I'll introduce you to the differences between point type and area type and we'll just brush the surface of the available settings in the character panel and the paragraph panel. So when we're working with type we can click on the type tool to select it and simply click on the artboard and this allows you to just type type away and you can choose if you are in all caps or regular typing and with this particular type I now have some settings available to me within my control panel across the top to engage those settings on the control panel I simply click and drag and now I have um, I can choose the type face I can choose the type style and the type style if you use the drop down menu you might not be able to see all of this within the demo window but that's where you set your your light your bold your italic settings that's type style and then just to the right of that I can set type size but I actually have more options for this type under the window type and character so you sometimes can find the character and paragraph panels available here if they are not available you can engage them under window type and character so let's bring those up. You may not be able to see the drop down menu because it's rather long and you can take a look at character and paragraph. You can see how those panels look. I can show and hide those panels and within these two panels there are options. I can hide the options. I can show the options. So there's all kinds of things available. Notice how when I hide the options um, I've got some of the same settings in the control panel including the font family, the font style, size, but there's some other things available as well which we'll go over in a moment. Now at this point I would like to introduce you to the difference between point type and area type. Now remember when I chose the type tool and I clicked on the artboard, I just clicked once that creates point type and if I click and drag and select my point type maybe I can set this to be a little bit larger so it's easier to see but the interesting thing about point type is that as I'm typing it can just type across <laughs> beyond the artboard and it can just type and keep typing across the window. So sometimes we want to constrain type to a particular area and that's the difference between point type and area type. So if I use the type tool and I click and drag an area, now I have created area type. I'm going to make this a little bit smaller. Notice how I can change the type size in the character panel or the control panel before I start typing. So now when I type, you can see that the type will wrap within the selected area. Now one of the reasons that this type is not being constrained within the text box is that I have a setting of baseline shift set in my options panel. Notice how I have baseline shifted up nine points and this will show you what baseline shift does as I delete or move that baseline shift maybe just set it to the null setting of zero. Now you can see that that type is constrained within that text box area and baseline shift is a little different from 
superscript and subscript. Notice that if superscript is selected, the type gets smaller and gets shifted up as well. So understanding that there are different settings within the character panel that you can pull up under show and hide options is important because sometimes you can start typing away and Illustrator will remember the previous settings that you had used and that can sometimes cause a little bit of frustration. So that's the difference between point type and area type. There are different ways of selecting type to edit. You can click within a, a line of type to select the type line if you want to add specific parameters to one line of text or one particular word then you can do that as well. You can change the color of the type which is easily done using the control panel. You can change the type color and you can change the type face by selecting an entire text box. You can change the type face I have all kinds of interesting typefaces available to me. And you can see how that type is wrapping within that text box area for the area type. You can click three times and select an entire line just like you would in other other word processing software like Microsoft Word. If you click three times you can select an entire line and you can make sure to change those settings. We'll set this to the default. And you can choose type style from the character panel. So clicking and dragging lets you select specific items. Clicking three times will let you select an entire line. And we can look at some of the different options available within the character and paragraph panel. The paragraph panel is pretty straightforward. You know, setting your, your paragraph type, whether it's going to be um, left aligned, center alignment, right alignment. Then there's justified text, which you would typically see in a magazine or a newspaper. So what we see more often in magazine and newspapers is justified type with the very last line being aligned left. Sometimes in invitations and things of that nature you might see justified text with the very last line on the bottom like so. Notice how I didn't like how selected was being divided so I simply added a soft return which is a shift plus return to move that SE down to the, the lower line. So justified text um, you might use in larger publications but typically this is called body copy and body copy is is more often seen left aligned than anything else. You can also change the spacing within this text box, like how far it's indented. So you can indent an entire box of text, which is, is really helpful if you were working, let's say, with, um, with a quote and you had a, a pull quote. You might want to indent that entire text box. Um, let's return that to neutral. You can click in the first line of text and you can indent only the first line such as you would see in a book that you were reading. Typically the first line is indented. Um, and you have the ability also to set so if this was a quote, let me set this back to neutral and let's say we're working with a quote in this text box and we wanted to bring it in on both sides you can do that as well and we start to see as we increase that amount and you'd want to maybe make that equal amounts so pull quotes easy to make and so there are a variety of options available now rather than adding a, a multitude of carriage returns to set the spacing between text boxes and paragraphs. 
it is actually recommended to add space between the paragraphs in a consistent manner by setting that here. So we could have 25 points before and after the paragraph. And it's recommended that you do that here as opposed to um, using a number of returns because you'll have more consistent results. But we'll get into that more when we get into typesetting. Now our character panel, recall that we can show and hide options here. You have additional options um, that are available within this drop-down menu. Uh, you can set things. Let's work with a headline. So let's say we've got a headline. And we can choose a typeface for our headline. Let's choose something kind of fun. Oops, it didn't take it. Optima. And I'm going to make that headline a little bit larger so that you can see. Now the interesting thing about headlines is that you can see the differences in spacing between the letters much more than you could in body copy. So let's say this is our body copy and this is a headline. And I'm going to move this down just a tad. And if I was looking at this headline and I noticed that I, there's a lot more space between the H and the E visibly than there is between the E and the A. I might decide that visibly it might make more sense to me to have a little bit more padding in between the E and the A. Well, if I use my type tool and click between those two lines, that setting is called setting the kerning or the spacing between two characters. So now, as I click, I can see that there's added space in between those two characters and it just makes it seem a little more consistent, especially between the E and the A now and the A and the D. So I just play with that a little bit until it looks like something a little bit more comfortable for me. And this is where typography comes into play. Um, looking at things and making them visually more consistent. Well, it takes a lot of practice. It takes a lot of time. You could spend an entire semester just talking about typography. But that's what this setting is all about, setting the spacing between two characters. Here's another one that you might not be familiar with. The leading refers to the amount of space between the lines. And that's because when they used to typeset things, they literally placed letter by letter pieces of bits of type and then separated the lines of text with pieces of lead. That is why the spacing between the lines is referred to as leading. I can change that. Let's use our text box here. I can change the leading. I can decrease and increase the leading. Now a rule of thumb at the very minimum I like the, um, the leading to be set at least 1.5 times the original point size. Now font sizes are expressed in points. So this is a 20 point font. And we're dealing with letting here, so I would probably increase that. Watch what happens when we decrease the letting. The type gets very cramped, very hard to read. I like to put a comfortable amount of letting between the lines and it makes it much easier on the eyes, easier to read. But as a minimum, two points, at the very minimum, two points more than the original point font size in setting the letting. I personally like to use a bit more, or 130 to 150 percent. And then the tracking is the spacing for the entire line of text. So if we had a text box and we didn't like, let's move this back up here and perhaps we didn't like how certain words were being divided. Let's see if I can get that example to pop up here. So I didn't like the way that selected was being bounced into the next line of type. Well I can do certain things to this to increase the tracking for the entire bits of type. I also think that the the letter forms are a little bit tight 
in general. So if I decide that, I can set the tracking for these selected characters, and I can increase the tracking for the entire text box. Now what I have done is we've increased the amount of space between the letters for all of the lines of type. We've changed that awkward divide of that word, and overall the type is easier to read. So understanding what these settings do is very important. A word of caution on the next two settings, vertical scale and horizontal scale. It's not good practice to add transforms to type. I'm going to undo that. You can see how easy it is to click and drag. You can stretch and squash type. And you can do that here, vertical and horizontal scale. It's not recommended that you do that. Instead, it's better practice to find a typeface that actually exemplifies the style that you're looking for, rather than tweak it by stretching and squashing the text. And we've already seen a little bit of what baseline shift does. You also can work with rotation in this panel. You can change type to all caps, so if I had Let's say, oops, we got to go over here, started a new text box, and I have this headline, and I select this, and I decide that I want it to be all caps. I can do that. There's another setting that I work with at times called small caps. That's a really beautiful setting uh, to add a little bit of vari variation to headlines or button text if you were creating a website for example it makes the secondary characters small caps leaving the original or first character within the line as a larger capital letter so there's all kinds of, of different options if you were working with mathematical equations uh, superscript subscript comes into play if you had a footnote if you're making notations in larger documents of course we can underline text and we can strike through type if you were um, correcting type and what the setting is here is setting the anti-aliasing method so right now I've got the anti-aliasing method method set to sharp if I had it set to none, and we zoom in, you can see the pixelation that would occur if we were to rasterize the text. Now, rasterizing the text means that we would convert this from a mathematically calculated line to a flattened, rasterized, similar to a bitmap, um, flattened, pixelated bit of text. If we use strong anti-aliasing, it really smooths out the type quite a bit. And this refers to if we were to flatten this and export this as a flattened image, let's say if you were making JPEGs for web delivery, that's when this anti-alias method would come into play. Um, I typically like to work in Sharp. That seems to be my favorite method, um, but you will develop a preference for that as you work. And so this concludes your introduction to the type tool, the character and paragraph panels, and just beginning to work with the type tool, understanding the difference between point type and area type. And in a, in a moment, or in the next demonstration, you will get to work a little bit more with typesetting and wrapping text around photos, pictures, images, vector graphics, all kinds of fun things. So stay tuned.